Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 22.1209.3 On the ninth day of Moistmas, my whole crew gave to me some wet sand, a straw, and a book titled The History of Bukaki by Irate Alex. Welcome everyone to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with Giovanna Drago, not related to Ivan Drago, although I bet she wish she was. She is from Barnet, which is in North London, and in October of 2020, she was involved in an accident. This accident, according to her lawyer, means she is deserving of a payout because it took 20 months for her leg to fully heal. Sounds serial. Sounds like one of those really dangerous roads in cities where you try and cross a zebra crossing and it doesn't matter, the car is going to hit you. But no, it's actually something simpler than that. You see, Giovanna Drago was breaking the law. In October 2020, she crashed an e-scooter, which at the time was not legal. Still isn't for the most part. Some cities have started to incorporate them into allowing them. You can rent them. But there are very strict rules about how to use and when to use when it's allowed and not allowed, blah, 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 to use an e-scooter. As far as I'm concerned, I think they should be legal. I think they should because it may well reduce the amount of cars on the road. If you're more local, it makes sense. It's not like people are going to be going from town to town on them. The battery life is limited and have you ever tried going uphill on one? I promise you that top speed goes into negatives. Well anyway, in the case of Giovanna Drago, she crashed it into a pothole. So while riding something that wasn't legal in the first place, she took it upon herself to sue the local authority for damages to the tune of £30,000. This accident broke her left knee. The brand of the scooter is a Xiaomi Mi Pro 2. They're not that great, to be honest. She told the central London County Court that she had no chance to avoid the hole because it was dusk and hard to spot. You tell me you didn't have headlamps. All right. The London borough is being sued for failing to maintain the road. She also claims that she is entitled to damages despite admitting that riding her e-scooter on the road was an illegal act. The council understandably in turn say, yeah, she should get nothing because she caused her own injury by venturing out onto the roads when it was illegal to do so, with only scooters rented from an authorized hire scheme legitimately allowed on public roads. Hence my earlier remark about how some places are allowing them. If they're rented, they take it upon themselves at that point, much like the Boris bikes in London. I'm assuming you'd have had the same accident on a push bike, because you stupid. What makes the case with Giovanna Drago so interesting it is the first to go before a judge, which means in turn it will set a precedent for future claims. She also claimed that she had no idea she was breaking the law when she took it on the road, and had only ridden it twice before the crash. She was wearing a safety helmet, so at least the most valuable asset she had, her, well, mine, was safe. Yay! And she was only travelling at a moderate speed, but it was dark. So, gives money. I'm not irresponsible. I didn't look at the road laws. I, I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know. I, I, I knew what was going on, I just couldn't see. And, and while it was illegal, and I totally agree with you, I give Mumry. I, I had to wear a brace for like, and crutches for six weeks. This is distressing stuff. And that 12 centimeter scar, oh wow, it's, it's, that's, you know, that's a lot of money for that, you know. While she is pleading ignorance to certain aspects of it, she bought it from an Amazon supplier, the scooter that is, that routinely warned the customers in every disclaimer they use about any and all legal restrictions barring taking a private scooter on the road. So my solution is this. You see, in the case of Giovanna Drago, she fucked around. And because of this muscle wastage, scar riddled, 20 months of pain, you found out and you should get absolutely nothing for it. So next, as we're in the month of December, it seems only right we speak about Christmas or Moistmas, or if you're one of those people, Sithmas, but mostly just Moistmas. Courtesy of Sargon of Akkad's secretary, Callum, 
This isn't your country anymore, sweetie. Included is an image from an article, which is from Wales Online, with the title reading, Time to rethink Christmas as half of country is not Christian, says diversity group. They say many people feel left out and excluded from the celebrations while their own religious or spiritual festival is ignored. A group that works with organizations on issues of diversity and inclusivity says it might be time to cancel Christmas. The call comes after new statistics showed that less than half of the population of England and Wales described themselves as Christian in the 2021 census, which means that Christianity is a minority religion. What the article hasn't pointed out, though, is that when you've got less than 50% of the population being Christian, what about the other religions? Well, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jewish, Islam are also, by the definition of what they've used there, minority religions. No religion takes up a huge chunk, yes, but it's still under 40%. And outside of these six main beliefs, paganism is number one, with roughly 74,000 adherents in England and Wales. Now, this diversity group that are championing this potential idea of abolishing Christmas are ignoring the fact that of all the religions, Christianity is still the biggest, by a margin greater than 30%. It is huge, comparative to other faiths that are nearby. The nearest, by the way, is Islam at around 8%. And Eid, I believe, is referenced on a regular basis in politics. It is, in fact, celebrated in this country. But of course, frame your argument a certain way, just wait for someone to bring out the actual numbers so you can see how stupid you are. With the festive season, which usually starts in September, but now Halloween has kind of taken off, it does genuinely get pushed back a bit because of it. No doubt we'll take Thanksgiving as well in the near future because we like to appropriate any excuse to eat extra food. Christmas has kind of superseded the faith that it was or is associated with by others. That's fine. It is now very much a capitalist utopia for random tat, food, swag as I call it, and gifts, much of which is usually spoiled by people who ask explicitly for something and have a tantrum when they don't get it. I don't ask for gifts on purpose, but I have an Amazon wishlist down below by all means buy me something. Now watch this space, spice, whatever, encourage organizations to reconsider their approach to the festive season, with the co-creator saying, Christmas can be a time of fun and joy, but it is also filled with stresses, challenges, and discomfort. Rather than forcing everyone to celebrate in an old-fashioned way in the name of just a bit of fun, there is a great opportunity for organizations to take a fresh look at how and why they bring their teams together, and it even has suggestions. One, ask your staff what they want. Two, make a calendar. And three, be flexible. Four, celebrate purposefully. I mean, getting shit-faced is a pretty good reason to celebrate, don't you think? Bring out the snowballs. Get the Loch Fine chocolate orange liqueur. Bung that in a hot chocolate. It's 40%. You're getting so old, mate. Now, within each of these suggestions, it references other people's beliefs and does mention things like Diwali. Is that how you pronounce that? Diwali? Diwali? I don't care about religion. If you don't like that I've said that or mispronounced it, sounds like a you problem. But if you go back to the very first one, collect a clear demographic of data on your staff. That's important to accept differing views, cultures, and perspectives. I assume if the majority don't want to celebrate Christmas, you're going to be open for business on that day. No? Just my corner shop. Yeah? Okay. And the pub I clean. Oh, and just as a final point about watch this space, you champion diversity inclusivity, yeah? Why the majority of you white women then? I am not convinced a single one of you has a leg to stand on. The word diversity means literal shit when the team fronting it for all photo ops are about as cliche middle class white women-y they can get. Don't get rid of Christmas, by the way, because I like it. I like the decorations, because it tickles me. I like that people have differing perspectives on it, because that also tickles me. I mostly like the food, and I really do like mince pies. In fact, can we have those year round, please? Um, I want to get fat and just eat all of the mince pies. Thank you. So next, I have to throw in an honorable mention. Last week, we spoke about a cheerleader and the desire of many of her viewers for her to put on a bra so she lifts her top up to show underboob. It's quite coincidental then on my phone, I got another article from another cheerleader related story about someone complaining in her comments that it was too small and that she needs to size up and that it is hurting her feelings when people continually ask her about her small cheerleader uniform. That is the extent of how far my honorable mention goes, so instead we're gonna go to Keemstar 
Ethan Klein for the second time this year calls for an attack on Team YouTube, proving he is the only YouTuber calling for that and still not be taken down from the YouTube platform why included is a video. Before I play that though, underneath, the cult is in panic mode, which includes I believe the subreddit. Some saying it's time to tank the subs, with peace and love put the show on a delay, please for the love of all that is holy put the show on a delay, and live needs to be delayed or not live anymore. What on earth did Ethan Klein say? We have to do whatever we can to protect the kids, and if that means shutting down the entire Catholic Church and Vatican City. <laughs> That's not good. Ethan Klein, after all, is renowned for being a man of action. As he slouches in his chair because he knows if he sits upright, his chins will choke him. Now, of course, you do need the full context of that, and I don't have it. All that reminded me of was that there is a country on this planet right now that has actually banned the Orthodox Church in its country to help it win the war. There are many people who hold very divisive views on that subject matter. I firmly believe it is one step away from a totalitarian regime, and it is a concern. In the context of what Ethan Klein has said, if you have to resort to violence to resolve your problem, or the problem, chances are you are not smart enough to solve it peacefully. And it is impressive considering your reach, even after all the damage you do with your edgy boy comments, because you keep doing it. We know the edgy boy wants to come out, that you keep on doing it anyway. It's like the leash around your necks isn't quite tight enough. And people are on damage control because you keep on saying things that can harm you. Don't worry though, you were one of two of the dumbest people this week. The second being Jennifer Lawrence who gave an interview to Variety. Variety posted this tweet twice by the way with a video. I can't play the video because they will copyright claim it. But I'll read the tweet from Variety along with two of my favourite replies. We were told girls and boys could both identify with a male lead but boys cannot identify with a female lead, Jennifer Lawrence says of taking on the role of Katniss in The Hunger Games. Now this is quite interesting to me because I grew up watching some very iconic action movies with female leads in. So I guess we'll go to Undoomed first. Alien, Aliens, Terminator, Kill Bill, Underworld, Resident Evil, G.I. Jane, Charlie's Angels, The Long Kiss Goodnight, Viva Vendetta, La Femme Nikita. I'll add to that, Tomb Raider. All of which happened before Jennifer Lawrence made it in The Hunger Games all of which were also quite successful. I'll even throw in one more, just because I'm a good Samaritan, Electra. Action movies with a female lead can work. They do work, in fact, when you don't shove it down our throats that it's a female lead. The moment you do that is the moment we all decide, you know what, we're not going to entertain your movie because you're pushing something that we don't care about down our throats. We want to see fighting explosions action. As Count Dibula pointed out, couldn't take the ratio on the previous tweet, huh? Thought you'd delete it and put up a new one, and no one would notice that she's still an idiot. He is 100% correct. You got ratioed to high heaven on this tweet. High heaven. This interview is disingenuous, and I thought Jennifer Lawrence had quit as an actress. Jennifer Lawrence, in this very interview, erases women's accomplishments so that she essentially can take credit for them. What it also tells us is, She's never watched a movie in her life. Clearly not. She was too busy staring at her pictures released during the fappening of her own asshole to actually realize everyone else has been doing this for decades, trailblazing and elevating it for others, which include her. It is tragic, insulting, and pathetic to devalue and water down what everyone else did before you just because you think the first woman ever to do this. Before we finish, I'm going to add one more movie, Aeon Flux. Okay. We're done now. I think we've contributed enough to the landscape of movies, and I think this video on its own shall suffice. Variety, you are disingenuous. Jennifer Lawrence, you are delusional and stupid.